Hello and welcome to Talk Thursday. I'm Maria Ressa. On this Talk Thursday, we'll talk about the economy in the Philippines, in Southeast Asia, and the world. We're speaking with the man who is in charge of putting together the financial policies of the Philippines, Secretary, Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima. Good evening, Maria. Good evening. It's yeah. good to have you here, Secretary Purisima. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's a good yeah. day to be talking about the economy, isn't it? You well, the market just reached another high. Yeah. How would you describe the Philippine economy today? Well, I think it's uh, pointed in the right uh, uh, direction. And uh, finally, I think things are aligned uh, with a leadership that has a mandate, that uh, wants to do the right thing, that wants to transform the uh, Philippines, uh, with uh, the Philippines right at the center of what will be the most dynamic economic region in the next uh, uh, 50 uh, years. No? And uh, with the Filipino people no? uh, being uh, more uh, global, more open to uh, uh, you know, new ideas. Well, the challenges. in fact, today you have the Philippines was Asia's best performing stock and it hit another record peak. It's been a very good year. Can it maintain it? Well, uh, the focus of the president really is to address the constraints to growth yes. that has held us back uh, the past many years. And these are mainly governance. No? Uh, as you know, uh, back in the 60s, we were number two Japan. No? And now uh, we're uh, nowhere near the top. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been really a series of uh, bad administrations uh, who's mismanaged the economy, had bad policies, and uh, really uh, uh, basically didn't give us the opportunity to take advantage of what was happening around us. Uh, now we have a president who really uh, wants to uh, address that. No? And he has the mandate. Uh, secondly, he wants to address the infrastructure uh, issue. Uh, when we travel around the region, you can see the gap between us and our neighboring uh, uh, countries. He wants to invest in our people. Uh, he views our people as our key uh, differentiator, as our key uh, uh, assets. He wants to open up the economy. Mm -hmm. He opened up the skies outside the Correct. Metro Manila. No, yes. I mean, several administrations tried that. They couldn't. No? Yes. But uh, he uh, uh, did it. And yes. uh, obviously, transformation takes uh, a long time. Yes. But the important major first steps has yeah. been uh, uh, made. And as a result, we're starting to reap the dividends of what I call good governance. No? Uh, one, the confidence of the market is uh, quite high, which allows us to borrow at lower cost. No? And uh, just in 2011, uh, we saved approximately a billion dollars no? compared to program in interest expenses. No? This was more than enough actually to fund the conditional cash transfer uh, program. And that's the beauty really of get getting deeper into the virtuous uh, cycle. You open up space in your uh, budget no? that used to be spent on uh, interest no? right. to more productive uh, things. On the way we spend our uh, budget, uh, DPWH, for example, yes. saved billions, yes. uh, uh, being more efficient in bidding out projects, and the quality of projects mm -hmm. are uh, even uh, better. And, and yet, sir, critics will say that that kind of focus on the on the nitty gritty actually held up infrastructure spending in the first year. So you had from 2010, you were at 7.2 percent, and you went down in 2011 to 3.7 percent. I mean, could the government have done better in that time period? Was there too much of a focus? When on the you nitty -gritty? transform uh, organizations and countries that are even larger, you really have to uh, start from the bottom and r r work on the processes. We can look good one month, one year, or two years, yes. but that's not the aim of the president. The president wants to sustain good performance yes. because to alleviate poverty, which is really his main goal, mm -hmm. we need to not only continue to grow, but grow at higher levels over long periods of time, a time beyond his administration. And shortcuts won't get us uh, uh, their painful steps, no? uh, rationalization, really challenging the bureaucracy to do things differently. Is, Would uh, you do it that way again? I mean, uh, you know, holding back the infrastructure spending during that first year, are there lessons learned? We did not hold it back, except that we didn't agree to improper ways of doing things. No? For example, in the past, no, uh, you can just make uh, build a road anywhere no? yes. without connecting it to the road network. Yes. See. When we go outside, mm -hmm. sometimes there's a kilometer of paved road, sometimes one lane is paved, then the other lane is uh, paved. No? Right. Uh, that, that doesn't give the, us the benefits of uh, 
of uh, uh, you know um, efficient road uh, transport system. Right. What the president insists that if we build a road, it must be part of the road network. Uh, no, uh, that, plan. that makes logical sense. Yeah. But again, holding it back that much, I guess, could it have been done better? I mean, you were an old hand. You this is your second time in in, yeah. a, in the cabinet. Um, was there too much of an inordinate focus? Were there? Were you too much focused on corruption issues at the expense of pump priming the economy? If you want to build a tall building, you really have to dig deep. You know? And a lot of the work is uh, underground. And if you take shortcuts, that building won't... Uh, Will be uh, shaky. Yes. So and you're that's saying what that the president you're laying about. the foundation. You've the laid president the foundation. laying the foundation, continue to lay, uh, lay the foundation. Because it's not going to be one event. It's, this is a journey. It took many, many years yes. for us to get from where we were in the 60s to where we are now. Yes. And it will take so many years to get back also. And it's important that every step of the way, we are actually investing in the fundamentals. Um, are you poised? Do, do you think that you've invested in the fundamentals? Are we in a good place? Uh, we will continue to invest in the fundamentals. I believe we're uh, hitting some tipping points. In terms of perceptions, mm -hmm. it's changing. In terms of people starting to have hope again, it's uh, changing. Uh, people are, you know, starting to open up to us. Uh, there's still some doubt, mm -hmm. no, but they're starting to open up to us. Mm -hmm. They're starting to put money in the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Philippines, in the stock market. And pretty soon, they'll be putting up more projects, more plants. And uh, uh, before you know it, we'll have momentum. And that's what we need. Well, there was a disclosure last night in London that actually pumped the stock market yeah. today. Uh, Felix said that they yeah. discovered oil, uh, gas, sorry. They discovered gas. Yes. And it could bring in as much as $75 million of investments this year alone. Mm -hmm. So that kind of... How does, how does that impact the overall program that you have in your mind? Well, those are, uh, you know, a bonus, no? Uh, as you know, the Philippines is uh, one of the most uh, minerally endowed countries in the, in the world. And that's why we just need to make sure that uh, our regulatory environment is uh, predictable. Yes. It's fair, equitable, there's level uh, playing field. Everything do is done on a transparent uh, how do you uh, prevent politics from getting in the way here? Like, for example, in, in, in mining, there's an EO that's pending and very heated in the Philippines. You know, it's actually surprising. How do you navigate that road to find where the balance is between development and sustainability? And that's, you know, that's an, a very good example of uh, where the president is using his mandate uh, to, to really uh, do the right thing. No? Yes. Uh, uh, administrations with uh, uh, less mandate would have backed off uh, immediately from industry pressure, from pressure on the other side, but no, not the president. Uh, he said to the group, yeah. we'll have to come up with a new way of regulating this environment because he wants to have responsible mm -hmm. mining and mining that benefits the community mm -hmm. and the country and that the revenue sharing is something that's uh, uh, fair to everyone. And, uh, and that's the beauty of a president with a mandate who wants to use it properly. Some people will say, yeah. though, that the mandate is eroding. You see, he's coming into the second part by the 2013 elections. Some analysts are saying he's a lame duck president. What are the three economic goals that you want to see done uh, during that time period? Where will he put that kind of popular mandate? Well, towards? first on the lame duck thing, I don't really believe it. The president's popularity level is... Uh, I think unprecedented. Uh, this uh, definitely much, at, at uh, seventy-five to eighty percent when he came in. Right? Yeah, but, yeah. But now and I think he connects forward. with the Filipino uh, people, and they know that he doesn't have any other uh, agenda. Uh, three things: uh, fiscal sustainability. Okay. I, I think that's uh, a crucial uh, uh, foundation. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we expand the tax uh, base. We reduce our deficit to two percent of uh, uh, GDP, so that our debt to GDP continues to. Uh, uh, go down. Okay. Uh, macroeconomic stability and price stability is very important because yes. uh, when uh, foreigners bring in their money here, they don't want it to be uh, depreciated away. Okay. No? Uh, so that is important. And it's also good for uh, maintaining uh, uh, competitive uh, labor and wage environment. Well, as well as its popularity. Part of the reason there was a dip, analysts say, was precisely because the trickle down. It yeah. didn't trickle down. It, yeah. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, uh, trickle down takes a long time, no? Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it will really take uh, many, many years of uh, high growth rates. And that's why the president's approach is both from the top and the bottom. We've expanded the conditional cash uh, transfer program. We de we've increased the budget of the Department of Education, the Department of uh, yeah. uh, Health, the TESDA. 
All of this, if you look at the way the uh, president shaping the budget, he's focusing on people yeah. because he wants to invest in our people. As you know, the fastest growing part of our population is the bottom quintile. Yes. And our, if we are to attain the potential of our people as being our asset, yes. we need to make sure that the bottom is uh, skilled right. and can be productive participants in the economy. You know, Maria, in 2015, we're going to hit our uh, sweet spot from a demographic standpoint where more of our population will be in working age. No? And uh, ah. countries that have hit that in the past have seen acceleration in their growth rates. No? And we're going to hit that in 2015 at the right time because that's also when we will be part of an integrated uh, ASEAN which will be a market of close to two trillion probably more than two trillion uh, uh, dollars and in that uh, integrated ASEAN will be the second largest population next to Indonesia and probably the most mobile so and that's why we're excited about the future for that's the what you're preparing for I mean you're hosting the ADB well uh, here now. the ADB really is uh, an opportunity uh, you know uh, going out party you know a way to you're show coming. off yes they are coming out party rather uh, yes. the way to uh, uh, show to the world uh, what the president has done since he took over. The thesis of the president is uh, good governance is good economics. Yeah. With uh, better governance, uh, you get more confidence, as I uh, said. Mm -hmm. People, the private sector, are mm -hmm. committing long-term, unprecedented. No? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see, you've seen major groups make major announcements of, uh, and commitments of mm -hmm. capital mm -hmm. over the next many years. Mm -hmm. If they don't have commitment in uh, uh, confidence in the government, if they don't trust uh, the way the system is going to be run. If they feel that there will be favored uh, uh, entities, they won't make those uh, uh, commitments. No? And th that is really uh, part, uh, at the heart of uh, the president's uh, how do agenda. You, how do you prevent, I mean, I asked this earlier with the EO and mining, but how do you prevent politics? There are several things, impeachment, the upcoming elections. How do you prevent politics from getting in the way of of confidence in the economy. Well, politics is like water. It's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the and, uh, is already you just force, have to wear, yeah. uh, have an umbrella or a raincoat and uh, be realistic uh, yeah. about it. Uh, <laughs> you know, we live in a democracy. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the other uh, system, the other alternatives are, 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 are I, I don't think, uh, something we'd like to go back to uh, uh, again. No? So we simply just have to navigate uh, accept this. It's accept this as a uh, reality work uh, with them and in government one thing I realize is you never can get the uh, most optimum option so long as you get an option that allows you to move forward mm -hmm. and maintain your support and get everyone to work with you then you know that's uh, an accomplishment already because what you'd like to do is continue to have these baby steps so that you you know snowball into uh, momentum no? that uh, can't be stopped and that's what we'd like to do. Well the Philippines this is this patch of good news today and mm -hmm. Indonesia in the region right yeah. so but this has been a bad week actually you uh, the Europe uh, Europe saw a lot of instability Monday the Dutch Prime Minister and the government resigned and your political instability in France mm -hmm. euro crisis uh, uh, is shaking confidence. There's a, there was a global sell-off earlier this week just because of what's happening in Europe. Do you see any of that affecting? How will it affect the Philippines? Well, we live in a global uh, environment. Uh, anything that happens uh, anywhere in the world, yeah. especially for to the largest economy in the world, which is the Eurozone, yes. will affect everyone. No? But you know what, uh, Maria? I look at Europe as an opportunity because uh, Europe as a trading partner of the Philippines right. It's not as big as Japan, uh, the U.S., and Asia. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, it only accounts for about 12% of our uh, trade. And yet, it's the largest economic zone in yes. the world. So yes. the way I look at it, it's not dis disappearing. It's, yes. not, it's just uh, caught in a flat uh, uh, or a slow growth uh, mode. But right. it's still an opportunity uh, for us if we're able to open up that market mm -hmm. for our exporters, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. our people, mm -hmm. if we can invite their investors to invest in the mm -hmm. uh, more in the Philippines. So for example, our BPO industry, the bulk of its clients still the U.S. Uh, market. Yes. Imagine if they can start to attract uh, European companies. Yeah. And in a crisis, companies need to be more efficient. And outsourcing is a one way to uh, reduce costs. So you're actually looking at what's happening in Europe as a way to get investments out of Europe into the Philippines? Is that a right way of summarizing? Uh, we're looking at Europe as an opportunity to further diversify our trade, our source of investments. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. The global economy has really had jitters. I mean, you had yeah. the financial crisis in 2008, yeah. um, and it was, again, lack of governance and lack of confidence that yeah. triggered it off. That isn't really over yet. Uh, is it in your mind? How do you look at what happened in 2008? We, we, we live in a very dynamic uh, uh, environment. No? Yes. Uh, challenges will uh, always uh, uh, be there. But the important thing is we continue to learn, like we did. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. faced the Asian crisis, no? yes. and uh, a decade that, before it, the that U.S. Actually, did, yes. uh, did us uh, uh, well. The Philippines has mm -hmm. had 52 or 53 straight quarters of growth since the Asian uh, uh, crisis. Yes, our banks are in better shape after the Asian crisis. They were in trouble uh, during the Asian crisis. Now their NPL ratios are below three uh, percent. Their capital adequacy ratios are are way above what is in required. In 97, it was in the 20s, I think, right? 21% oh, yeah. on NPL. On and NPLs, now it's, yeah. You know, and uh, uh, in fact, our reserves then were quite low. No? Yes. Now our reserves are at historic highs. And if you look at mm. the Philippines, we really are a net creditor country. Our yes. reserves are greater than our foreign uh, uh, debt. In, in fact, I think this was the year where the Philippines became a creditor. A contributor to the IMF. Yeah, yeah, when we used correct? to borrow from the yes. uh, IMF. So, uh, that's why I think we just need to continue to focus on things that we can control. What's that? Our own environment. Yeah. Because the things beyond the Philippines, we can't really do anything uh, uh, about that. What we need to do is make sure that we keep investing in the fundamentals. So whatever challenges out there that's yes. thrown our way, we'll be able to survive so that after the crisis, when the opportunity arises, we'll be able to take advantage of those opportunities. But can you anticipate some of these global and regional problems and prepare for them? I mean, is there any strategy in, in your mind right now? Or uh, As they say, the white swans, we yes. can. The black yes. swans, we, we don't. No, because they are not Please linear. explain the difference for that. Uh, we, are, we are joined by social <laughs> media, and you guys can uh, There's a book questions. about white swans and black yes. swans. White swans are events that are linear, that you yes. can uh, predict. That you can no? anticipate. That right? you can like anticipate. The European, yeah. But the uh, black swans are like the uh, tsunami in, uh, in uh, Japan that yes. you can never uh, uh, predict, or the flood in yes. uh, Thailand. No? Yes. Uh, these are nonlinear uh, yes. events. No? So, and this affects the whole global uh, uh, economy. You know, we can never ex uh, predict everything. So the best thing is to be in as good a shape as you can be okay. so that you'll survive and you do well. Uh, despite the challenges. And what are the three priorities? If you were to choose three priorities that you need to make sure you, you get done now in the next three years? Well, I mentioned fiscal, fiscal. Uh, and if I can combine that with the macroeconomic as one, the yes. fiscal and macroeconomy, infrastructure. We need said, to yes. not only invest in infrastructure, set a framework so that we can make continuous uh, investment in infrastructure, mm -hmm. especially under the private-public partnership. See, we won't have enough money on yes. our own, nor the management capability, nor the technology in the government mm -hmm. to be able to do all of the required infrastructure. The private sector has this. Yes. They're better at operating uh, things uh, than us in the government. So it, we must find a way to, to do this that will satisfy the suspicious public, that's a true win-win, yes. and that will stand scrutiny beyond the term of President Aquino. Well, PPP is a perfect example. Yeah. You, did, you did have the support of the country and yeah. the companies, yeah. but it was moving so slowly. Uh, that's what the media like to, would like to... Is, it, is the reality different from the we way We have to we look at the it. facts. No? Please. It took us a little over 16 months to launch our first PPP, okay. the Aquino administration. The Arroyo administration took two years. No? The Ramos administration for power projects, because of their special powers granted, took one year for the power. Uh, that was during project. the blackout. During period, the blackout. Right? But yeah. their first non power project took five years. No? Then the ERAP administration, yeah. because uh, it was uh, uh, you know, only three years, they didn't have any uh, PPP. I'm not trying to criticize those uh, yes. administrations. No, I'm I just trying you're to. Putting it in context. Yeah, so. put the yeah. context of uh, how we're doing. We set at a very ambitious target. And that's why they're saying, compared to our ambitious target, we yeah. underperformed. That's fine. Well, you can say that with BIR and the Bureau of Customs. But the targets were aggressive. So uh, you're so, saying... So was, uh, the target, uh, were the targets for the PPP. Because uh, when we uh, took office, uh, we had to uh, accept the projects uh, on stream. And uh, when we reviewed the uh, feasibility studies, a lot of them were dated. Okay. And it takes a while to... To, to update these uh, feasibility uh, studies. Mm -hmm. Our responsibility mm -hmm. is to make sure that the projects we launch 
are successful projects, mm -hmm. projects that will build confidence of the people in PPP, mm -hmm. and that is a true win-win. If we rush and end up with bad projects, we would have done a disservice to the country. Because we've did, done that in the past. We've had successful yes. and uh, more unsuccessful yes. projects. As a result, people are so suspicious about PPP uh, uh, projects and subsequent administrations always review it. Yes. You no, know? and then as a result, create problems rather than solve uh, uh, problems. We don't want to fall into that into that trap. No? Maybe it took a little longer at the start, but this year we're confident that we've gotten most of the kinks uh, out. We hope that uh, we can l launch at least eight projects and maybe more if we're lucky. And in 2013, even many more. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is after President Aquino leaves, mm -hmm. there is an ongoing process already. So that the next administration can launch it the first with, month yes, after yes. they take over and not wait 16 months like we did. But is that realistic? Because what we've also seen with each succeeding president is you know, really uprooting people who, have, who were making it work in the past administration, uprooting them. This is funny because in the Philippines, you know, if you're not with me, you're against me and you push everyone out uh, and we start from scratch again. Is it realistic to think you can build something for the long term? Well, when you look at it in terms of numbers, there's over a million uh, employees of government. The president just replaced maybe a thousand or two thousand. Okay. So the, the bulk of government is still there. No? Yes. For example, the, the people I work in the Department of Finance, 99 percent of them have been there a long time. Okay. NEDA's also uh, the same uh, case. Now, so uh, I think if we, if we build trust mm -hmm. uh, so that the next administration won't have a reason to redo uh, our work, then they can just continue um, what we're doing. Because the, the way I view government, it's really a relay race. Yeah. While you're holding the baton, you should run as fast as you can. It's not a marathon or a sprint, yeah. it's a relay race. Yeah. And the important thing is when we pass on the baton, we don't drop it. Yes. And that the person receiving the baton trusts that it's the real baton that he has to bring to the next uh, stage. That is the ambition of President Aquino. And when it, the measure of his success is that the people mm -hmm. would be so used to better governance that they won't expect, ex, uh, expect a ret, uh, accept a return to the old ways of doing things. What kind of man, what kind of what man or woman would you like to see replace President Aquino? Well, most importantly, the next president, which is still a long way, 2016, yeah. must have a mandate. Mm. I think uh, we'll all be losers if the next president doesn't have a mandate. Yes. Because uh, in a democratic system, the way ours is designed, yes. uh, you need a lot of political uh, capital. Yes. Uh, if the person doesn't have a mandate, it will be just be a battle for political survival. Uh, in government, uh, what is right may not necessarily be popular. Agree. Yeah. And if you are weak with no mandate or yes. with a very uh, weak mandate, you, you will go for popularity, popularity at the expense, of, at the expense of doing what's right. Yeah. So, and that's why I think most important, it must be a person with a mandate mm -hmm. so that he will be able to form a coalition mm -hmm. in uh, both houses mm -hmm. that will support his uh, uh, agenda. What Two, the person must care also about the country. Uh, I think, but I'm confident there are a lot of people who care. And, uh, you know, um, after what the president uh, uh, is doing mm -hmm. and what he'll show mm -hmm. uh, at the end of his term, uh, I think uh, it will encourage people uh, who cares and uh, who will have the mandate to go for the office. Um, I'm going to throw some questions yeah. at you. Well, before I, I go to social media, uh, let me ask you your projection for this year coming up. I mean, different growth rates, the IMF is coming It will be better than last year. <laughs> between 5 and 6, but lower than the government's 7 projection? I mean, what, Well, the 7 is aspirational because that's really where we need to get. Yes. I mean, China since 1987 and uh, 1978 has been growing at uh, close to 10%. Yes. Right? Vietnam since 1992 has also been growing at the clip. No? And, uh, and Vietnam is overtaking a lot of the uh, Southeast Asian nations. Right uh, Vietnam has been doing very well and uh, in a lot of industries has yes. overtaken many countries. In the coffee industry, it's now yes. a world powerhouse. In the furniture industry, yes. uh, in rice, it's mm -hmm. a major uh, player. In tourism, it's uh, getting uh, uh, traction. And um, I think uh, it's important uh, we continue to make the environment uh, more friendly to uh, investment. We make the 
uh, governance more transparent and more predictable mm -hmm. uh, and we continue to work on uh, the foundation so um, let me throw this, these few questions at you now because we're, we're running yeah. out of time. Huh? How do you, coming from Twitter, how do you handle the factions in the cabinet? Well, uh, you know, if we were uh, just of one mind, then that's dangerous because uh, uh, that's what you call groupthink. No? So yes. if we are all thinking the same thing and yes. it's wrong, yes. that's bad for the country. Yes. I think a healthy cabinet is a cabinet of people with different expertise, different points of view, mm -hmm. who, who's not afraid to express it. And we have uh, healthy debates in the cabinet. And the president uh, has uh, the stature and the mandate uh, and uh, the, the guidance mm -hmm. to uh, uh, make decisions uh, after being presented with different uh, uh, points of view. The president is often portrayed as not uh, not stepping in with the making decisions at the time when they need to happen, that he's not working hard. You work with him all oh, the time. What yeah. kind of work ethic does he have? Uh, you know, it's really unfair to the president. The president's uh, such a hands-on uh, person no? mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I meet with him for hours, no? uh, talking mm -hmm. about uh, what we need to do and explaining uh, why we need to do things a certain way and not the, uh, the other way. I just came from an almost uh, six hour meeting mm -hmm. uh, the, from 12 o'clock up to when I left wow. to come here. Okay. Now, obviously the topics uh, were different. Now, there yes. were two, uh, three uh, uh, meetings, but the president so hands on. They, they keep complaining about the absence of a, uh, you know, a whole cabinet uh, meeting that like before was every week. Yes. You know, in my experience, I, I worked in a previous administration, that's a waste of time. Why? The bulk of the time, 95% yes. of the cabinet members uh, do not have any interest on in what's being discussed. And they, you're wasting their time. Yeah. And what they do in, uh, after the cabinet meeting is to prepare for the next cabinet meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, it's all for show, and the president wants to manage for performance and not to uh, you know, just please uh, people who says he should have a weekly cabinet meeting. We have daily yes. cabinet meetings, but it's only cabinet members who need to be there. Again, it's the second time you've been in the cabinet. What makes, how would you compare the, the two stints that you've had as a cabinet secretary? This one's more fulfilling. Uh, I'm more inspired. Uh, this is a president who truly cares. I mean, I joined government. I came from the private sector yes. because I thought I could make a difference. No? We tried hard, yeah. you know? but this time around, you know, we feel that we can. Uh, make a difference because the president uh, uh, empowers us, mm -hmm. uh, uses his mandate uh, to make tough uh, uh, decision, uh, and uh, is uh, you know really cares for the people. He he spends money as if uh, government money as if it's his own, no, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very good uh, and refreshing uh, perspective. Even when he travels, no. Uh, you know, I've traveled with many presidents. Yes. In the past, we even had two planes, U.S. style, no yes. one reserve plane. Uh, and uh, in, uh, the previous administration, it's always chartered, large plane with large uh, uh, delegation. Yes. President travels commercial and only charters when it's impractical to uh, travel uh, commercial. And the, the, the team he brings is very uh, limited. And he only travels when there is a purpose and he believes that we will accomplish something uh, to improve uh, the situation of the country. Our pres the president has actually staked his, he's pushed his neck out in the impeachment trial. Yeah. Um, what happens if the, if the chief justice uh, is not convicted, is not impeached? What happens? You know, whatever the decision, I believe uh, our democracy, our institutions will become more mature. It also sends the right signal to everyone that no matter how high you are, uh, if you are involved in yes. questionable things, you will be challenged. And I think it's important that uh, uh, that's the message sent uh, not only to the judiciary but to all branches of uh, uh, government that they will be held accountable mm -hmm. by someone. No. So I think we're winners here. Uh, because if we just closed our eyes, mm -hmm. that's like a cancer that we knew was there, yes. that will uh, let progress to a more uh, uh, difficult stage. Two last questions yeah. from social media. One is with the mining EO. Any idea when it will be coming out? Well, um, we are going through the consultation uh, uh, process. We'd like to have uh, uh, announced it uh, earlier, yes. except that we need to do the staff work. We need to consult the. Uh, uh, everyone and my own view and I'm not part of the team that looks at that but our inputs were uh, asked 
it's, it's, it should be a 50-50 partnership. Mm. No, we own the minerals. Yes. No? It, yes. it should not just be the private sector running uh, all the way to the bank. Yes. Uh, the community, the government must yes. benefit from this. If not, we should just keep it in the ground. <laughs> Right? You're looking for win-win. Yeah. Um, moving on to the sin tax reforms. When will sin tax reforms be passed? Again, this is going to be a big uh, fight because uh, a lot of uh, vested interest uh, uh, is here. No, uh, I, I want the people to understand what really is at stake no? mm -hmm. what, and what we're trying to change. Yes. We have a current law that pegs the, the basis of the tax on 1996 retail prices. Okay. Obviously, that's not right. Uh, the, the, the prices of cigarettes and uh, alcohol has been going up since yes. 1996. No? So we want that to be based on current prices. Secondly, mm -hmm. there is a provision that classifies uh, brands as to old brands, those that are listed in the annex of the old law, and if you're not there, you're a new brand. And when you're a new brand, you're taxed at multiples of what old brands uh, yes, are. Yes. This, this is, is a, a barrier to competition. And that's why in the cigarette industry, yes. you have one company with 97% of the uh, market share. Third, there are many tiers, yes. which makes administ uh, administration very difficult. We'd like to reduce the number of tiers. No? And the other thing that we're doing is the bulk of the proceeds of the increase in revenue from this bill will go to universal health care. We call it sin taxes because yes. uh, alcohol and yes. smoking uh, is not healthy, mm -mm. causes health problems, causes us, uh, the economy, actually a lot of money yes. in terms of ad additional health care costs. What the president wants to do is to get the money from here uh, to, to enroll the bottom quintile and maybe the next one and try to have a universal health care system so that all Filipinos will have the opportunity to have lead healthy lives. Is that part of the reason it is uh, so toxic in many ways? There are interests that you're, just like the open skies policy, you're yeah. going to have to run roughshod yeah. over interests. Because there will be why losers. Is, there why will are be. you not more transparent about who the potential losers, what the, what the environment the, will do? It's obvious who the potential losers uh, will be because yeah. uh, one, the existing players will have to pay more taxes. So all of them yes. will have to pay the government more uh, rather than uh, put it in their pockets. To those with uh, monopoly yes. uh, market uh, shares will have competition and that market share will uh, decrease yeah. over a period of uh, uh, time. They'll be the losers. Yes. And that's why they're going to fight uh, uh, tooth and nail to... to uh, to defend their position. And that's part of what's overheating the, pol the political atmosphere as well. Yes, and they're funding all the media campaign, all the negative uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also tried to reform it uh, during the time of the previous administration, mm -hmm. uh, except that at that time we were also pushing the VAT yes, reform. Yes. So we, pre uh, we put priority over the VAT and we got this uh, uh, other bill that was inferior. And that's why having had the opportunity to uh, uh, get another crack at it. Uh, I propose to the president You're that we need to. Where do you cut correct. your losses to be to focus on your priority? So let me just give yeah. you last words. You yeah. know, you're in charge of this economic ship where the country is going ahead financially. What last words? Well, I think we as citizens of the Philippines must think positive. I believe in the Pygmalion concept. You know, when you tell a, a child he's good, you continue to tell the child he's good they ultimately become good. If we always look at the negative, no, it will uh, kill the national psyche. It will mm -hmm. make people so neg negative that they lose hope. In fact, a lot of our fellow citizens are voting with their feet and leaving the country. And that's a sad thing. We only have one country that is truly ours. We really need to make sure that we give it every chance of success. By looking at the positive, celebrating the wins, at the same time looking at the uh, areas to be improved. No, not closing our eyes at it, but not focusing on it and not dwelling on it. Because you cannot have anything perfect in this world. There's no such thing as perfect. Yeah. There will always be mistakes. But the important thing is if we make a mistake, we'll realize it, we'll correct it, and then we move on. Fantastic. Good luck. Okay. Tough job ahead. Okay. Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima on Talk Thursday. We'll continue the conversation. Watch and we'll get your questions back up uh, to the Finance Secretary. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is Talk Thursday. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for joining us.